Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. This is a very exciting weekend. I'm at the National Farmers Union Convention with Montana Farmers Union, and I'm so happy and excited to be here. So I hope to take you along and show how important it is to advocate for family farms. I will also be speaking on the Engaging the Next Generation of Agriculture panel, which is very exciting and an honor. So thank you so much for the opportunity, and I'm so happy to be here and show you along. with Philip Pruitt who is a youth delegate with Montana Farmers Union which is so amazing and you're going to tell me a little bit about your experience with Farmers Union and here at the National Convention so far. Yeah so today is our first actual day at the National Convention and we've had a really good start this is a great way especially as a youth delegate to get involved in the ag community and the policies that affect young agriculture Yes. Um, young agriculturists, you know, they're really the next step into farming. I mean, it's not going to be long and I'll be farming on my own. And, and that's something that I really am passionate about. And with National Farmers Union, it gives me a chance to voice my opinion among other members all across the country. And the first big step is going to camp. Um, I've been going to Montana Farmers Union camp since I was eight years old. And now I work as a camp counselor there in the summers. That's amazing. I also went to camp. I know. You don't have to be a producer to be involved in agriculture. If you eat a steak or you eat vegetables, you're part of agriculture. That is a great point. And a lot of people fall away from that, especially with you. I mean, you've made a big impact on the ag community as an ag you. influencer. And we don't have a lot of that anymore. A lot of times now, the mainstream media likes to hurt us. And yes. they, they don't like the fact that agriculturists are actually doing something good for the country and our communities. Um, this week we will speak with panelists, which you are one. Yes. And we get to hear a lot of their life stories and how they've made a difference in influencing agriculturalists and closing that gap between consumers and producers. Um, I talked with the school when I was in DC and the kids, I asked them, where does your beef come for, from? And a kid answered me with, he raised his hand, he was real polite, but he said from the grocery store. Oh my goodness, yes. And a lot of kids anymore, they don't understand that that beef that you bought was actually a cow. Yes. And someone had put a lot of time, money, and labor into it not to receive a very fair paycheck. I mean, not many 17-year-olds would be willing to, for one, start their own fashion line, and two, talk about the real problems in agriculture. And so that's something that, I mean, you've made Montana Farmers Union really proud of. Oh, and, thank you. And, you know, I hope you keep doing what you're doing and you really succeed. So. Wow, thank you so much yep. and you are so wonderful as well. Thank you. We have the best youth delegate here <laughs> and such a wonderful representation of Montana Farmers Union and I think the future of agriculture because agriculture is really in good hands when I look at someone like you and, and hear you speak about topics you're so passionate about and really can make a difference. Thank you. With the needs we hear from our community and focus first and foremost on what we can do at CDA to affect lives of those we serve. Now I'm here with Commissioner Greenberg of Colorado and you are truly an inspiration because you're the first woman commissioner of Colorado and this is awesome so thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Could you uh, explain to me your background about agriculture? Um, so I grew up in Minnesota um, both in the city and out in the country in farm country. Um, wasn't raised on a farm I actually started farming when I moved out west and ever since then I've been in agriculture worked on various farms worked in natural resources in the US and Mexico and then got into policy with the National Young Farmers Coalition. That's amazing, and you're a Farmers Union member as well. I am. What has been your favorite part about being involved in agriculture? Uh, the people, the work we get to do, um, the policy is fascinating and it affects every person's lives uh, across the country, across the world. So the work that we do um, is fundamental, it matters, yes. and the people working to shape it are just incredible. It's so important. And what would you say is one of the most important issues you're working on now? Oh boy, well we're working on economic resilience, on voluntary stewardship, on supporting the next generation. I think all of those tie together to having a vibrant, resilient uh, future of agriculture filled with opportunity for young people. Yes, youth are so important. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And having more women involved in agriculture. Yes, that for sure. And yep. in very important roles. Absolutely, that's something I'm very excited about as well. Yes, well it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fairness. Without fairness, our society struggles. Without fairness, we cannot have vibrant communities and opportunity for all. Today, our agricultural system is not fair, 
because a handful of companies dominate the marketplace. Following decades of mergers and acquisitions, multinational corporations now control many sectors of the farm economy. God bless the family farmers for slugging away and, and, and the farm union members and many others uh, trying to turn this ship around. Now I'm here with Derek Williams, Youth Ambassador with National Farmers Union. So this is very exciting. Yeah, no it is. I'm really thankful that I get the opportunity to jump up here on the social media and talk a little bit about what I do. Um, so yeah, again, I'm Derek Williams. Uh, I'm a youth ambassador this year with the National Farmers Union. I'm originally from the state of Indiana. I go to school at the University of Notre Dame, go fight in Irish. That's awesome. Um, and I actually did not grow up uh, in an agricultural background. I was a townie, um, so I was the kid that only went to the grocery store. That was as far as my ag experience went. And it's thanks to organizations just like this, the National Farmers Union, that have kind of opened me up to this greater perspective. Uh, it's made me appreciate more about food security security, uh, food network, and, and the people that really put in the hard work and effort to make it all possible. I mean, agriculturalists yes. are the hardest working people I know. Uh, and I've made some really incredible friends, and I have come to appreciate even more uh, the role that they play in, in our society, uh, and I think that's, that's really important. That's phenomenal. Thank you so much. And I think you're a perfect example of you don't have to come from a generational yeah. farmer or an agricultural background. You ha just have to bring passion, and um, you can be involved. Yeah. No, I mean, that's always been one of my big... Uh, big beliefs is that no matter what kind of background you come from, no matter what kind of interest that you have, if you have the kind of energy and the passion to go out there and accomplish something, you can really do it. And that, that speaks true to what we do in agriculture. I mean, you can be someone from the city, from the town, have no agricultural experience, think that chocolate milk comes from a brown cow, and at the end of the day, you can go out there and make a difference in agriculture. You can become a first-generation farmer. Uh, you can get roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty, get out there in the field work, or you can do stuff with science, uh, technology, all these little things, uh, whatever you might be interested, all kind of feeds into agriculture, and it's incredible. Uh, it really is kind of an inclusive uh, organization that we're working on here with National Farmers Union, bringing in a lot of diverse voices, uh, just like ourselves, so it's pretty cool. Yes, and if some of my youth viewers would like to become more involved with National Farmers Union or in agriculture, what would you recommend they start doing now, or what opportunities would be available? Yeah, no, they have a really great uh, list of opportunities here with the National Farmers Union. They do something called the Beginning Farmers Institute, Institute uh, for the National Farmers Union. Uh, it's kind of a cool little uh, like networking opportunity camp kind of conference that allows you to network with other people, young people interested in agriculture. That's amazing. And get connected with staff, get connected to industry folks, the people that have the kind of knowledge that you're looking for. Um, and if you're kind of interested in that, go check out National Farmers Union on the website, uh, nationalfarmersunion.com, and you'll be able to check it all out. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out because there are some great people here who would love to talk to you about it. Yes, and you can also go to your local Farmers Union office and exactly. become very involved that way. Yeah, definitely. So, hey, we, uh, we look forward to having you as members one day. Yes, and we need more youth in agriculture. I agree. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yes, thank you. Now I'm here with the National Farmers Union President. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, it's a pleasure. And could you speak a little bit about National Farmers Union and the importance of this organization? Absolutely, so uh, Farmers Union was started back in 1902, 120 years ago, uh, really with just one mission, and that is to support family farmers and ranchers all across the country. Um, some of the issues that they faced way back then are some of the same challenges that uh, many of our members uh, face today. So we value ourselves on being truly the grassroots uh, voice for family farmers and ranchers in this country. Yes, that's fantastic. And being at this conference, it's really resonated with me how important family farms are and how crucial what you do is to um, improving the lives of, of the, these communities and these family farms. Well, thank you for the way you capture that because uh, really for Farmers Union members, um, and their families, it is about connections. It's connections, obviously, within our families, but also connecting with our communities, whether that's schools or local farmers union organizations. And then that continues all the way through to state and even national. So as we are here at the National uh, Convention to talk through what our policy priorities are gonna be, it really starts at that home, uh, at the farm or ranch, wherever they may be. Yes, and what's amazing about Farmers Union is I've noticed how passionate everyone here is and dedicated to making the best difference we can, and that's what's been so incredible. There's definitely a really strong positive energy here. Uh, we all know the challenges, but we also know the opportunities, and yes. that gets us excited about what the future could look like and what a food system that is fair for farmers, for ranchers, and consumers 
uh, could look like and working together to try to uh, to make that happen. So you're, you're right, I'm glad you're feeling it because there definitely is a strong energy in the air and we're just glad to be back together. Well, thank you so much and it completely starts with you. Um, you're truly an inspiration for this organization and uh, it's been phenomenal hearing everything um, you are speaking about. Well, thank you. You also are a very important voice in this and making sure that these conversations right here are connecting with everyone because we're, uh, in many ways, farmers, ranchers, consumers, we're all in this together. Yes, and that's why here I've been trying to share stories of other consumers and it's, it's amazing the diversity of agricultural operations and producers you have represented here at this conference. That's right, great bit of diversity and yet some of the same challenges and opportunities. Yes, and um, one conference can connect us all and we are connected through agriculture, which is amazing. Very well said. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Thank you. And it's been a pleasure meeting you. Oh, same here. Thank you. Engaging the next generation. My name is Josh Manska. I'm from the Iowa Farmers Union. Uh, today we have some very uh, special and talented people on this. with Oklahoma Farmers Union and that's just fantastic so thank you so much and you do an awesome job promoting women in agriculture and you were also at the engaging the next generation in youth panel that I was speaking on so thank you so much yes I was and I was very amazed by all four of you young women that was on the panel um, you got the right idea I'm so excited that National Farmers Union is going in the direction of seeking out those young people and trying to keep them involved. All you have to do is just ask somebody. We can yes. we can point you the direction for whatever aspect you're wanting to get in. Completely. And my family has been Farmers Union members for a very long time and has always spoken to me about how important this organization is. And my grandfather always said says to me, Kate, Farmers Union supports the family farmer. It's the only true farm organization and I had no idea what they meant by that until Montana Farmers Union gave me the opportunity to speak at their convention and start coming to these um, conferences mm -hmm. and now I see the positive impact this organization is making and the incredible voices that are being heard and and speaking here. I'm 50 some years older than you and I heard the same things from my grandpa who was a member so <laughs> we've been around for a long time we've learned from our mistakes We've learned to think out of the box. We don't have our production agriculture in the United States. We have no security. These small farms promote food security and competitiveness mm -hmm. and sustainability in small and rural farm economies, and that's so crucial. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. It's been lovely meeting you. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, I am too. Thank you. Thank you. I also think it's a great value for our youth to know that you do not have to come from a generational farm to be involved in agriculture. Agriculture is connected to all industries, and I mean, that's so important. So any passion or interest you have can be directly tied to agriculture and in turn used to make a positive impact. Now I'm here with Chad Doheny, and, and what's awesome is you're my wonderful neighbor in Montana. Thank you. Thank you very so, much. So that is incredible. And could you talk a little bit about how uh, crucial National Farmers Union is and Farmers Union as an organization? Well, Farmers Union as an organization, I believe, is really important because where most thing, uh, farm organizations worry about uh, uh, legislation or policy, we worry about legislation and policy, but we also worry about education. And education is so important to the masses that don't know anything about agricultural today. Yes. That's the most important part. I believe so. I believe education uh, helps us get policy done. And without education, I don't know where else we go. And Chad helps me with a lot of the photographs I have. So you have incredible photography work. Well, thank and you. And 
I just absolutely love learning as much as I can from you as well. Well, I love teaching you if I can, and I love taking pictures of your purses. Well, I thank you great. very much. I think that's a great, uh, great thing you've done also. Thank you so much, and it's just been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. Um, my question is, how do you talk to your peers who might not be interested in our policy? So how do you talk to your peers Sarah Wenzel Fisher, director of the Kavira Coalition. Could you explain to me what you're most passionate about? Sure. So uh, at the Kavira Coalition, we do a lot of community of practice building. So like farmer to farmer education, but we don't do any policy work. And I love being engaged with uh, Farmers Union because of the policy work that we do. So I am also extremely passionate about helping young people enter careers in agriculture. Um, you know, less than 2% of our population farms today. 100 years ago, 30% of our population was farming. Um, if we want to have food security, we need more people who can enter agriculture as a career and be successful at it and stick with it. Well, thank you so much. It's really been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Uh, it's been nice talking to you too. I grew up milking cows here in the old stone barn and those are just the best memories that I have. The way that dairy farming is going in Wisconsin, it's really hard and a big contributing factor to that is the monopolization in agriculture. Now I'm here with Arthur Douglas, former president of Utah Farmers Union, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. And could you talk a little bit about your background? Well, I'm a farmer rancher, have been on a family farm for over, been our family about 110 years, beef cattle operation as well as uh, uh, row crops. And what would you say is the biggest part of this national conference? Continue to educate the consumer of what it takes to get a T-bone steak from the farm gate to the dinner plate. There's a lot of them out there that don't understand the work and, and sweat equity we have in our farms and ranches. And that's the most important part, is supporting the family farmer. That's correct, because our kids of today are going to be our leaders of tomorrow. I'm going to keep my grandkids on the farm and, and keep it going, because the day will come when we are as dependent on uh, corporate agriculture, we'll be in trouble. Yes. They will be able to set their prices. And I think about agriculture, we're, we're, we're price takers and not price makers. And that's the really hard part about being a family farmer and just trying to make it. That's correct. We need to maintain, we need to continue to maintain that livelihood of America's farmers and ranchers. We're yes. the backbone of the world. Yes, we are. That is such an amazing statement. And thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Well, thank you. Myself, I can get nothing done, but by operating through Farmers Union, we can do all kinds of things. And one cute little thing we got going on in Minnesota is, Largely through Farmers Union initiation, we have two colleges now that are starting meat cutting schools. So farmers, I'm just proud as hell of Farmers Union. That's all I can say, and I'll talk some more later. I'm now here with Kirsten Vanderpoel from a family farm in Minnesota, which is phenomenal. Could you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, I live on a, I think we're on a fourth generation. Um, and so we raise beef cattle, pigs, laying hens, and then we also do some row crops. And then we direct market all of our um, meat that we produce to um, consumers in the Twin Cities. And so they kind of like a pre-order and then we stop in every five weeks and we have different stops that we deliver to. And then we also sell to co-ops in the Twin Cities. That's amazing. So, yeah, we've been doing that for about 20 years now. So, I love being involved in agriculture. I love getting my hands dirty. Well, this has been spectacular. Thank you so much, and it was a pleasure meeting you. Yes, it was a pleasure to meet you, too. It's yes, me as well. Yeah. I'm here with Dave Berger from North Dakota Farmers Union, which is awesome. Thank you so much. And could you give me an overview of your operation and your time with National Farmers Union? Okay, so an overview of my place is uh, I'm on my grandpa's farm. I raise longhorn cattle and horses. That's amazing. I uh, rent all my cropland out to a young farmer that wants to keep going. What is your background with North Dakota Farmers Union? So I would say our daughter who is 44 now wanted to go to Farmers Union camp when she was 10 years old. And then after her, all three boys went. 
within three months, we became Farmers Union members. And I think when, within five years, I was a director and I've been an officer. And now I'm the president of Oliver County's Farmers, Oliver County's Farmers Union. I've been to four fly-ins down in DC with Farmers Union and then three national conventions. You know, I'm gonna say 10 years ago, everybody kept saying, how do we get the youth involved? And as I looked around today, there's a lot of young people like you here. And without that, it's not gonna continue. We need that input, and just like we need it in our um, local communities. Yes, well thank you so much, and it's been a pleasure meeting you. Yes, well nice talking to you, and thanks for getting involved. Yes, thank you. It's kind of interesting how the older generation was more into attending meetings, you know what I'm saying? Go to meetings, the younger people are doing that less because they have so many other distractions. And uh, get people to go to meetings and take some young person with you and maybe force them to go to a meeting if you have any leverage over them. They usually have a pretty good bunch. <laughs> I'm now here with Emily Brown, a Farmers Union board member, and could you talk about your involvement with agriculture and Farmers Union? Sure. I have a background in public health and communications, but grew up on a farm in southern Colorado. That's incredible. And are you originally from Colorado? I am. I grew up there. We raise fresh market potatoes and barley for our coors, and my husband and I actually raise a few cattle as well. Wow, very cool. And what has your experience been at the National Farmers Union Conference? This is an amazing group. The um, Rocky Mountain Farmers Union is like a family, and then you get to see your extended family at nationals. Yes. And so it's really, um, when we have so few people in farming, it's great to come together with people who think the same way and want to make a difference in ag. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and it's been yeah. a pleasure speaking with you. No, thank you for being here. We're happy to have you. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> now I'm here with Bobby Wilson, president of Northwest Farmers Union. What is your background in agriculture? Um, so unlike a lot of uh, folks on the National Farmers Union board, I am one of the very few that did not grow up on a farm. Um, I am also, I believe, the only first generation farmer um, on, on the board and elected as a state president. So um, I don't have a, a background as far as, you know, family connection to agriculture. I wasn't a farm kid. Um, I grew up in town and I really came into agriculture when I was in college. Um, I went and worked on a small direct market vegetable farm and just kind of fell in love with the work and uh, fell in love with agriculture and that's really where, uh, where my interest uh, first got started. That is incredible. Thank you so much. And why do you think it's important for women to be involved in agriculture? Well, I think that historically women have been very underrepresented in agriculture and I think that's starting to change, that we are seeing a lot of growth in the number of uh, women farmers. We're also seeing a lot of uh, new farmers that are um, LGBT, that are people of color, and I just think that we need to uh, have that representation in agriculture and kind of change the stereotype that agriculture is only a profession that's for old white men, that there really are a lot of us that are involved and we need to see that. What are you most passionate about within Farmers Union? I think what I'm most passionate about is the opportunity to come together as a Big Ten organization um, and to really find the issues that affect all of us as farmers. So food is really the most important thing that we have. I think that you know we kind of take it for granted, but all of us uh, depend on food. We all depend on agriculture, and I think that we've taken it for granted, and we've allowed our food system to become controlled by too few entities, too few farmers. Uh, we need to have more farmers on the land. We need to have more diversity in the types of, of farm owners and farm managers, and also in the production techniques and the types of farms and the types of crops and uh, livestock that we're growing and that diversity is really what's going to make us stronger in agriculture and it's also going to make us stronger as an organization. Oh my goodness, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and it's been you. a pleasure meeting you. Really nice to meet you. Thanks for everything that you're doing to give a voice to, to agriculture in oh, America. Oh, thank you. I'm now here with Patty Edelberg. A little bit about me first. I'm, I am a dairy farmer from Wisconsin. My husband and I own a 120 cow dairy farm. Uh, so we've been farming for a long time and I've been involved on so many different levels. I have to thank you. You are such an inspiration to a young women like me. Well, thank you. I, so, I appreciate that because we need to get so many more women involved. Uh, this is your first time in the National Farmers Union Convention and I say every time I come here, uh, the more you come to these conventions, the more people get uh, sucked in, if you want to say, that they just get so inspired and they just want to continue to, to get involved and be involved in the organization. And, and it's not just in the organization. Once they become, once they're here, they, they suddenly are um, calling, the legislat calling their legislatures. They're calling the, uh, they're, they're writing op-eds. They're, they're speaking out and doing things that, 
that um, they never did before. You know, they're feeling the power, they're feeling the, the energy, and they realize that they can make a difference. And the more we can get people to do that, the better we are, right? The more yes. we can talk about family farm agriculture and the, and the reasons to stay involved and, and find the policies that keep our family farmers on the, on the farms, the better we're all gonna be. Oh, completely. Thank you so much. And it's just been really great speaking with you. So Absolutely. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. I so appreciate it. Senator Tester, my butcher, <laughs> before he was my senator. Look, Walter, uh, when it comes to family farm agriculture, you won't find a bigger advocate in the state of Montana. So thank you, Walter. I appreciate it. I've been in plenty of speeches by politicians, and they usually start out talking about themselves, so I'm going to start out talking about myself, even though I'm not a politician, I'm a farmer. <laughs> People say, what's the best job you ever had? And the best job I've ever had is being a farmer, a family farmer. <laughs> but today, we have four multinational companies in this country. They control 84% of our nation's beef supply. The same is true for hogs, chickens, grains, the same is true for inputs like chemicals and seeds. It's all consolidated. There's no competition in the marketplace. Family farmers buying and selling options have gotten fewer and fewer. The beef industry today is more consolidated when the Packers and Stockyards Act was passed 101 years ago. The result has been fewer family farms, fewer schools, communities that have dried up, we need to make production agriculture for family farmers vibrant once again. Those who are still in the game, let's proceed to the front. All right, let's see that coin flip. You're a senior now, or you're going now? Today is now my last day at the National Farmers Union Convention, and I've had the most incredible experience ever being on the Engaging the Next Generation of Youth in Agriculture panel, and I met some wonderful young members of Farmers Union and others who are just as passionate about agriculture as I am, so I think it's incredible the opportunities to learn. If you would like to become a Farmers Union member, you can visit the local Farmers Union chapter where you are, or you can also become a Montana Farmers Union member, even if you don't live in Montana, to support Montana farmers and Montana issues, just like my family has to face every day. It's been so encouraging coming to the national conference and speaking with all the youth engaged in agriculture, and I am very excited for the future of AG and to be a part of that. So I'm very excited to implement some of the things I've learned here at this conference into our operation and into storytelling through YouTube. I'm here with the founder, farmer, and chief of Sprout City Farms, which is just incredible, and be touring it today. Yes, I'm so glad you can make it out there. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn more about how your food gets to your table. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>